All right, Molo Sambonani, hello, how's it? Good evening, uh, dear viewers. Man, it's been a while since we've had an episode of the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Welcome to it. My name is Usikle Ngobese, a.k.a. Big Daddy Liberty. Um, man, it feels weird to be back <laughs> on the BDL show. I'm, I'm, I've become accustomed now to the new morning show. I don't know if you guys have started watching that. The weekday show of course between monday and friday from 7 a.m vuka nazo here on this channel where you wake up with the compelling analysis that you've come accustomed to here on the bdl show are you liking that show let me know in the comment section um tonight show as always on the bdl show it's never a long show it's about a 25 minute show and i have a very interesting guest who has penned an opinion piece, which I think is very instrumental, given the political uh, uncertainty, I'll call it that, that we are likely about to head into in the run-up to the 2024 elections. Now, you'll know, of course, that the ANC are quite literally on, on the ropes, you know, <laughs> and they're facing jabs uh, from political parties, opposition parties, who are emboldened by the results they saw in the last local government elections, where it's almost a clean sweep of uh, opposition parties gaining the ascendancy over the ANC and even removing the ANC from many councils. And the question we took out of that last local government election is, are we about to see uh, a repeat of these results insofar as the ANC government losing power in 2024? Now, this has lots of implications for you, the faith, flag, family, and freedom type South African, insofar as we don't really know what the ANC will act like when they lose power. And I say, notice how I say when, because all the projections, all the polls suggest the ANC literally are about to lose power in 2024. We don't know what the ANC will act like um, post losing that election. We also don't know what in the run up to these elections with the ANC seeing the exact same numbers that we see insofar as their dismal uh, polling, we don't know how they're going to act in the last few vestiges of power, official government power that they still have. Will they loot to their heart's content, you know, because it's the final few heydays? Um, you know, what will that mean for you insofar as service delivery? I mean, I know some of you who are watching this right now likely don't have a combination of things or one of the few following things, which is electricity, water, or even, you know, basic sanitation because of not, uh, or rather because of poor and incompetent ANC rules. So the question I want to put forward here is how do we then build uh, resilience ahead of that election and even beyond it uh, to make ordinary folks less dependent on daddy government, which has characterized South Africa uh, since our colonial apartheid and even today's day. This, this notion that government must control all, if not most, aspects of society. But hey, don't take it from me. As I said, I do have a special guest uh, with us tonight. I'm talking, of course, about Ernst van Sel, who is from AfriForum, and of course, better known as Conscious Caracal on his social media. Make sure you find him, please, on his platforms. Ernst, good evening. Good evening, Sikhle. Thank you very much for inviting me back on. It's always nice to... Uh, I'm usually here with, uh, surrounded by a panel of other um, very, uh, yes. very smart individuals, and then uh, now it's just me, so I'm on the spot. I better, uh, I better bring uh, some quality to your channel. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. And quality I know you will bring. Um, and before we even kick off the conversation, just a reminder to my viewers, it has been a while, folks. Remember, hit that like button, please, as you enter... Uh, and as you're watching this, and hey, do me a solid at the end of the show, hit that share button, especially if you enjoyed the content. Good evening. Welcome to it. This is the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Now, Adam, you know, you coined this excellent piece, in my view, where you, you really do break it down insofar as it, it, it's a mindset thing at this stage. It's a mindset of 
um, I, I want to coin it this way. It's a victor versus victim mindset where the victim will always look to someone else. Someone else must save me. Someone else must do something because I'm in X position. Whereas the victor will say, oh, hang on. As opposed to me waiting for some political messiah to come save me, how about I do something for myself? What were some of the central points you made in your piece, Ernst? Mm. Well, Sikhli, you've already laid the foundation of my central point and well, basically the central premise, and that is that the ANC appears by all metrics to be at the weakest position they've been since 1994. But a lot of South Africans always ask, but what alternative do we really have? And they always ask, it's almost like this has become a South African proverb. But when they're talking about what alternative do we really have, uh, they're usually talking in, in regards to uh, party politics. Like, but who can I vote for? Um, I wish I could, there was an option for me, an alternative, a re realistic option to, to vote for. And uh, my piece I wrote basically to tell people there is an alternative, but you're going to have to do a little bit of a mind shift uh, uh, in regards to how you view the world and how you view solutions. You're going to have to start thinking outside the party politics paradigm, outside the big government paradigm. You're going to have to start thinking in regards to how Afri Forum and, Solid and the Solidarity Movement have been thinking for a while now. And to answer that question of, um, well, uh, as the ANC are getting weaker, a lot of people seem to um, be feeling, uh, they, they fear the unknown of what will life be like after the ANC. Now, I don't know if there's life after love, but I do know there's life after the ANC. So I think that's the, the central question that uh, I want people to start answering for themselves. Absolutely. And, and even as you say that, you mentioned two organizations who in this country often get maligned, painted, uh, painted black in a sense, which is ironic because it's, <laughs> it's often said that they're anti-black. Uh, and beyond that, it's funny to see now that as the doo-doo hits the fan, even its most ardent detractors are softening their tone around those two organizations, Afri Forum and Solidarity. Now, I bring these two organizations up because you brought them up in a sense, sorry, mm. because they have a, a, an ethos, a, a way of doing things, if you will, which is coined loosely on South Self. Indeed, Solidarity mm. uses that as its hashtag in a lot of billboards, especially if you're around mm. Pretoria, check that out. Talk to me about that particular ethos because it's the very thing, I, I think at this moment, which is, in the way I see it, the future of South Africa. Yes, it's the it's that's the radical departure. So for I mean, a lot of people, when I say that we've been trapped in a big government paradigm, they immediately their mind sp uh, jumps to, oh, well, it's been the uh, past 30 years. Like, no, uh, in, it's this is an this idea of centralization has been uh, and it's older than 100 years in South Africa. This has been the the prime solution that people go towards when there's any problem in society we need. Um, the, the the government to solve it for us. This whole idea of that, uh, well, uh, uh, let's just outsource all our responsibilities to the government and uh, they are the best, they will be the best uh, to deal with all these different complexities in our society and they should be the manager of our lives and all our inter-community affairs and uh, every, every facet of our society. And we can see this, I think, in living memory specifically, in the past 30 years where I dare you to just go think a little bit of any instance where the ANC government have given up government power, but willingly, not that they were forced to because uh, a government capacity collapsed or that the courts or uh, other organ forced them, where they willingly said, we are going to give up power here um, and step back. Uh, you're not going to find a lot of examples. Um, and that brings me to this alternative path, the path that uh, Afri Forum and the Solidarity Movement have been pioneering for more than, yo, it's now been since 2006 for Afri Forum and for Solidarity, it's been longer. It's been uh, almost, it's been over t uh, two decades now. Um, but yeah, that and, and that alternative path is, as you now correctly pointed out, Sikhle, the self dun philosophy. We're going to do it ourselves. Um, and it's difficult. It's not just something you set up from the beginning. It's not just something you 
snap your fingers and then tomorrow there's 150 neighborhood watches and a private university and technical college and a, a theater and everything. So as you build up slowly, you can ask someone like Kali Krill, the CEO of AfriForum, he'll tell you. When AfriForum started in 2006, they had three employees and zero members. Um, if you counted the employees as members, they had three members when they started and maybe some family members. But that's where you start off. But since then, we AfriForum, for example, has grown to a point now we, we can boast 300,000 members. Um, we have over 150 branches all across the country, over uh, 150 neighborhood watches. And these branches as well, they do everything from fixing thousands of potholes, planting trees, planting community uh, vegetable gardens, doing cleanup missions. And that's just scratching the surface. I'm just talking from the top of my head. And that's not even talking about what the solidarity movement as a whole has achieved as well with the establishment of uh, academia, world-class tertiary education institution, and then also the building of Soltech, another world-class tertiary education, specifically um, technical college uh, that uh, was built and was finished in uh, 2020. And it was built for, I think if I remember correctly, uh, 30 million rand. And uh, the, the, the majority of that 30 million rand came from uh, small donations from Solidarität members. And the largest uh, donation amount uh, was 10 rand. So that's uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it uh, the next time the ANC comes and say, well, we don't have money to really build new schools. Uh, and it's very, very expensive to build universities. Well, the, the university under the, uh, the ANC under the watch of Le Sufi wasted over 4 million rand on sanitizing schools where the majority of the time students weren't even there. Imagine that they just applied a little, a, a drop of the vast amount of tax uh, payer money that they have towards doing what uh, Solidarity and Afri Forum are doing. And uh, just a last thought there, um, often people say, uh, why don't you just uh, help everyone in South Africa? Why don't you just solve every problem? And my answer is always, well, the day when the ANC gives us a nice or just a small slice of that taxpayer money, then we can solve a lot more problems and we can uh, help millions more people but uh, at this moment uh, specifically uh, we do the most that we can with the limited resources that we have but that pool of resources that we have started all very humble and small and uh, back in the day and now has grown to a very large pool that we can actually do real massive differences in the world that are uh, raising quite a few eyebrows let me just put it that way <laughs> absolutely absolutely and you know what makes it really a chalk and cheese type uh, uh, comparison is you look at a trade union like Solidarity and you compare it to, mm. let's say, Kosatu of uh, mm. um, uh, Numsa, right, which broke mm. away from Kosatu. Their priorities are just <laughs> like it, it, it tells everything you need to know insofar as the, mm. the it's the mentality behind it all. Here mm. is uh, Solidarity, which builds a 300 million rand Soltech specifically for hard required technical skills which are desperately needed by the south african economy that's a trade union that understands what the market needs and how to create mm. if you will more employable young people which is effectively where the world of work has gone and Not which it already has a track record employment. of doing uh, i don't know exactly the, uh, don't know exactly the statistic but it's a uh, it's something like 70 or 80 percent of students within the first year after graduating from saltic already have mm -hmm. a job hardly surprising but this is where i wanted to go with this mm. here's a solidarity unit that does this versus numsa which wanted to spend 30 million rand just on a conference uh, that was interdicted by the courts. And here's a Kosato that's been around since about 86, if I'm not mistaken, that has initially had millions of members uh, and which has dwindled over the years. But where's their university? Where's their institutions that support, again, as they would say, right? They, they would say, oh, we're pro-black, they would say. We support the black, marginalized, you know, those who've gone through apartheid and blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Where are their social institutions that help those very black individuals? Mm. Again, I don't, it's a mindset thing. 
Yeah, but you see, Sihir, that's where the mindset shift comes in. And this is going. I'm going to be frank and honest here. This is a difficult mindset shift. It's not just something that happens overnight. You're going to have to, South Africans are going to have to wean themselves off what I call in my piece a dependence-forming drug. And that dependence-forming drug is the, the, the drug of state centralization. And that doesn't mean you should completely withdraw yourself from party politics. I mean, you can still be a very active citizen in regards to party politics um, and be uh, and go cast your vote. But my warning is don't put all your eggs in the party politics basket. Don't depend on uh, on princes or political parties to come save you. Um, because uh, they also have their own agenda they, and they can also just fail. They can make all these promises and they uh calm maybe they won't even deliver on it maybe they don't win the next election and you just bet your entire community or your family's destiny on that party of yours winning the next election so don't withdraw still be an active part in party politics but start building those alternative solutions as one well, contributing to them and it's not difficult to become um involved there are so many ways i mean firstly uh, just based on the afri forum model you can become uh, active at the afri forum branch you just go to afri forums website and you go to get involved and you can see if there's a branch close to you um, you can just become a donating member of any of the uh, organization like afri forum or solidarity you can give as little as uh, i think 50 rand or 40 rand i'm not exactly uh, sure what the the floor is but a very small amount per month and that makes a big difference. And then you get the services that the government is failing to produce. But why I titled the the my piece as well that there is a a, a secret almost to the life under and after the ANC is that this model is not something that is just relegated to Afri Forum and Solidarity. It's not a fluke. You can this model can be replicated. It it just needs to be. You just need uh, uh, individuals with calling and people coming together to build something bigger than themselves. And you need that energy behind it. But the blueprint is there, and that's why at Solidarity uh, and Afri Forum we always welcome people coming there to come ask. But how do we do this? How do we do this? Coming with their notepads, making notes. But the thing is, that it starts small, but the, the silver lining is that the, the blueprint is there and we are very happy and willing to help people build alternative solutions like we have. And we already see uh, different organizations building on this model. They, they're starting from humble beginnings, but Afri Forum and Solidarity uh, also started from very humble beginnings. But that's the thing, is the first step is that mindset shift. You're going to have to get yourself out of that paradigm of thinking, my only, my only hope is uh, that a political party comes into power that will help my community or my family, that will represent my best interests. And if that party doesn't win, well, then I'm screwed. Then I don't have any option. You need to be able to be state proof. Where, and that's another term uh, we talked earlier about. We use the term self dun but then we also use the term starts per stunt, state proof. So you become... Uh, resistant to whatever is happening from the state. Two things can happen from the to, from the side of the state that can harm you from the side of the government. The one is just collapse of capacity. So that this is not malicious. This is just the government losing capacity to deliver the basic services that you need to function in a normal in a normal life. Uh, basic services like water, electricity, and uh, anyone listening here knows what it's like to lose any of those two services. I think they've experienced this somewhere in the past few, few years, maybe even in the past few months. That's the one side. Then there's the malicious side, where the government is actively imposing policies that are dangerous and harmful, like pursuing expropriation without compensation, pursuing national health insurance, um, creating a, a, a business environment that is openly hostile towards uh, the free market and openly hostile towards businesses and small businesses, imposing uh, racially discriminatory policies that uh, exclude people from the economy and from employment and that exclude, for example, organizations from getting funding, like, for example, the Tears Foundation that fights gender-based violence, but they can't get uh, funding from the government because their management is just too white statistically. So the, and that's just a, a small amount of examples. So those are the two ways that the government can harm your, your life. Two, two examples from the state collapse to actual malicious or misguided policies. Both of those Perhaps. can be mitigated through mm -hmm. becoming state proof. And that's, that's, that's the winning recipe.
Absolutely. And indeed, as we taper off this conversation, uh, Adams, there's someone listening right now, probably thinking, okay, great. I hear this, this works well. Um, and I must say this because I know it's going to happen in the comments, but it, that's just those, those Afrikaners, they'll say, yeah. you know, they, they just, they, they stand together. Um, we could never do this as community X or community Y. Talk to me about how wrong that is, number one. And number two, and how at a family or individual level, people can also mm. build that uh, stay proofing, if you will, and a right. uh, almost zenzele or self-doing mm. ethos. Mm. Hmm. Well, Sir Claire, I just find that idea very funny seeing as we, I think the most, one of the most uh, uh, popular jokes in Afrikaner culture is the fact that Afrikaners can't stand together or unite against anything. I don't think that's true, but that is the perception that our com that, uh, that uh, is, is prominent amongst our community. And uh, I think a lot of uh, other communities might have that same perception about their own community. I think it's, uh, I don't think it's true regarding my own community. I think Afrikaners can stand together on the things that are important. But the point is other communities can also stand together on the things that are important. Don't be limited by um, these types of ideas that are holding you back. It, it starts off small. That's why I'm saying. Don't try to save the world. Don't try to even save the country. Save your household first. Save your street first. Then save your neighborhood. Then save your community. And then you branch out bigger and bigger. That's how you, that's how you start. So you, I always look at it in the way that you build a team. So you start off with two people. That's the minimum amount of people you need to qualify as a team. Build a team of two people for your initiative, whether that be a community vegetable garden, a neighborhood watch, whatever you start with a team of two people then you start then you add another person then it's a team of three people then a team of four five six seven then it starts building momentum you start getting some victories under your belt you and humble small victories but victories nonetheless you start building and building and building like i said afri forum didn't start off with three hundred thousand members afri forum has now uh, been in existence since 2006 now 2006 sometimes doesn't sound that far 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 back but then you have to remember 2006 is 16 years ago that's a, that's a long while and it took a long while to build that momentum it started all very small every forum didn't have the resources or the support to take politicians to court in the beginning we didn't have the resources to fill thousands of potholes we had the resources to fill 10 potholes for example or to uh, uh, do small differences in the community and then you build that momentum so don't get discouraged you just have to start the best day to start was yesterday but like i said in my piece and as i've already said it's absolutely imperative first step is to do that mind shift you have to start looking at the world and at problem solving in a different way don't wait for a hero don't wait for uh, general de la Rey to uh, appear on the horizon don't wait for uh, shaka zulu's uh, Shaka Zulu in the modern age to come appear on the horizon and he's coming to save you. No, you be that hero. You be that in the community. You embody that spirit of the hero, of the leader, and you will actually start seeing some results. If you're waiting for some hero to arrive to save you, you're going to wait too long until the flood uh, flood of state collapses at your door and then it's too late. Mm. Build the ark now, as Noah said. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Big thanks from you um, for joining us. Mm. And of course, uh, how do the folks get in touch with Afri Forum if they're looking to become a member? Well, if they want to become a member, it's open to anyone. We don't, uh, unlike the ANC, if you become a, if you apply to become a member of Afri Forum, we don't ask your race or your culture or your background or anything. <laughs> you can just go to the Afri Forum website. You just go click join and then uh, you just fill in your details there and you should be, uh, should be good to go. If you live abroad, you don't live in South Africa, you can still support Afri Forum uh, by becoming a friend of Afri Forum. You just Google friends of Afri Forum and then you can become a, a, a supporter of Afri Forum there as well. And yeah, and the other small thing that you can do is just to uh, share uh, the news of uh, this alternative and to share the, the mm -hmm. good news that there is an alternative. You don't have to be stuck in the state centralization model. You just need to wake other people up to start looking at the world just at a little bit of a different angle. And suddenly all these new possibilities start opening. And that's that's the that's the key. And that's what each and every one of you can do to help uh, 
to help that uh, that that uh, culture shift and that mind shift happen uh, on a mass basis. That of course is Ernst van Sel, who is from Every Forum. Big thanks to him on that, and he's absolutely correct, by the way. And I'll I'll go one step further. I'll go one step further. His the notion of on self self or self doing as Aaron say is one which I've been talking about insofar as how about we begin to lead the charge? How about we begin to get involved in spreading that ethos in what I proposed as a Mazakele campaign or a build it yourself campaign? Now we're doing work in the background. We we've kind of been working on the show and getting the show. <laughs> to have a daily a website, blah, blah, blah. We've done all of that now. Now we're heading into campaign mode and we're beginning to have a conversation as the Big Daddy Liberty Channel with friends of ours. And I won't name them yet because uh, we're working on stuff. And you might very well see this Zulu face traveling across the country, pushing this very ethos, building these very resilient communities across the country, especially in those places where we don't have a reach, for example, at the moment, and actually beginning to say, dear South African, whether you're black, white, Indian, or colored, poor, middle class, or rich, you are on your own. And now what is needed more than ever is South Africans, a faith flag family and freedom type South Africans to build this nation and build this economy. And the best way we can do that is to adopt a mazakele ethos, say build it yourself. You run your own food garden, you form your own uh, community security service, you fill your own potholes, et cetera, et cetera. There are many things that people can do rich from the poorest to the richest. So look out for that. Um, there's some meetings happening in the background uh, of some folks who will help me do this and uh, more will be announced soon. With that being said, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, please, on your way out and hey, share this show please and uh, with that being said have a good evening i will see you tomorrow morning for thursday's edition of vuga nazo and until then remember never trust a commie <laughs>